Welcome geometry students to class today on this Monday, April 7th. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some math today. Let's look at these announcements very quickly, please. As usual, I will talk quickly and I uh, need you to pause the video if I go too fast. There will be a quiz tomorrow and we're going to talk about that in just a couple minutes. And that's definitely not the right size. Let me fix that marker real quick. You will have a test on Friday. That means you will have a review sheet on Thursday, okay? A review sheet on Thursday. Pretty long review sheet, so don't be shocked by that. And make sure you're ready to work really hard Thursday and Thursday night. Um, I probably uh, will be coming in Friday to give the test to the first hour class. Haley, I will not be there for your class. However, if you can ever, you know, skip first hour with permission of your teacher, it's not, don't tell the teacher that it's mandatory, but if you're able to do that, you're welcome to come over and take the test first hour. Um, turn in Friday's homework, please. At this time, turn in Friday's homework. Azu and Martin, you've already turned it in. So I'm talking to Jake, Jasa, and uh, Haley, please turn in Friday's homework. And then lastly, Jake and Jasa, I sent you guys and your parents an email, um, so you probably, you should know about this. Uh, via the emails I sent, you two owe me some, some assignments, okay? You know what those are. Um, I kept the emails in case you need me to resend those, but please turn these in now at this time, okay? If I don't have all these in today, then I'm going to contact your parents again. Um, remember, guys, you have a teacher that cares enough about you to make sure you don't get behind. Once you get behind in this class or any math class for that matter, it's very difficult to get caught up. Now, back to Friday's homework here. I've asked you to turn that in. If you don't know what it is, it's right here. Uh, page 567, numbers 25 through 32. I gave this to you on Friday to do over the weekend. Here's the video that goes with it, Geometry 10.5 part two homework okay so please take care of all of this stuff and let's go ahead and get started with today's notes let's take the class period today and I told you guys last week we might do this and let's do some serious review for the quiz tomorrow okay I'm not gonna cover anything new today I'm gonna go really uh, not slow I'm gonna go fast um, but you'll be able to pause the video when you need to I'm gonna give you some examples that you can take notes on <clears throat> excuse me, on your own, and then also some problems you can work out, um, some with me and some on your own, so that you're getting plenty of practice for the quiz tomorrow. So I'm telling you now, at this point in the video, um, whatever is on this review today is what's on the quiz. There'll be nothing else on the quiz except what I review today. Um, this is going to accomplish two things. It will help you do well on the quiz, and it's going to help you better under understand the math that we covered in the past, because the more that we review, the better, uh, the more practice you get, and the better you'll understand it. Please do exactly what I tell you to do. There will be times when I want you to follow my examples um, and work with me, and there will be other times when I want you to pause the video, work the problems on your own, and then turn the video back on. So please follow those instructions carefully. Just like we did last week, I want you to take very good notes on this video. You will turn in everything that you wrote down uh, tomorrow. Uh, so you will turn this in tomorrow before you take the quiz. So take really good notes. Every problem that I want you to work with me, work with me. Every formula I want you to write down, please write them down. Every problem that I want you to work on your own, please work on your own. And I will go back and check that. And so make sure you take really good notes. All of this will be due tomorrow. Okay, so no homework tonight. No homework. Just take really good notes in class. Turn in your notes tomorrow and study for your quiz tonight so you're ready for the quiz tomorrow. <clears throat> If you do not finish the video in class, you must finish it tonight. Um, I guess you could say for homework, but really you're just finishing the class period. So if you do not finish the video in class today, you must finish it tonight at your house. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Copy this problem in your notes, please, and let's work this out together. Um, we have learned in the past how to solve a 30, 60, 90 triangle. There are three formulas. I'm circling them for you right now. There are three formulas I've given you that you can use on a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, on your test, I don't think I'll give these formulas to you. On the quiz tomorrow, I will have these formulas written down. So on the quiz tomorrow, you need to be able to look at these formulas and know when to use them. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Whenever I give you a 30, 60, 90 triangle and I ask you to find the missing sides, the first thing you want to do is label all three sides. So go to your right angle 
and then draw a line going straight across from your right angle and that side will be your hypotenuse. So I'm going to label that hypotenuse. Then go to your 30 degrees and go straight across. That will be your shorter leg. And then the other side left over is your longer leg. So it looks like we're missing the shorter leg and the longer leg. X and Y. Well, it really doesn't matter which one you solve for first. I know if I want to find the shorter leg, I take the hypotenuse right here and I divide it by 2. Here's the formula right here. Shorter leg equals hypotenuse divided by 2. Well, my hypotenuse is 5. So what I'm going to do is where the H is right here, I'm going to put 5 for the H and then divide it by 2. Do you see how I did that? Here's the H right here, and for the H, I substituted 5. So in order to find the shorter leg, I take the hypotenuse, I divide it by 2, and the shorter leg equals 2.5. Now in order to find the longer leg, look what you do. Here's your formula right here. For the longer leg, you take the square root of 3, and you multiply it times the shorter leg. Well, I know what the shorter leg is. I just found it. It's right here. 2.5. So I know my shorter leg is y, y equals 2.5. Now I come over here and for a shorter leg I'm going to put 2.5. So longer leg equals square root of 3 times 2.5. Now I have taught you in the past you should put this number here out in front of the radical. It's just more accepted that way in mathematics. So your longer leg is 2.5 square root of 3. And that's it. So that would be your x. x equals this right here. Now I guess you could type this into your calculator and get out a decimal. That's totally fine to do. This is also an acceptable answer right here. You can write 2.5 times the square root of 3. So whatever you choose to do is fine, but there are the two answers for x and y. So when you're given a 30, 60, 90 triangle, use these three formulas here. Okay, pretty simple. Just use the formulas and substitute the correct numbers in. Now, I want you to try one on your own. Okay, so go ahead and copy this problem in your notes. Go ahead and pause the video. Work this out. And when you're done, restart the video and see if you got the answers correct. Okay, so go ahead and do that now at this time. Okay, um, if you're not finished with the problem, please make sure you've paused the video. I'm going to go ahead and go over this problem at this time. We notice right now that we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. As soon as you see that, you know you want to label all three sides. Here's your right angle. Go straight across, and you know that side over there is called the hypotenuse. Go to your 30 degrees, straight across to the other side. That'll be your shorter leg. So the only leg left is your longer leg. So there, you've labeled all three sides of your triangle. Now, we're solving for A and B. Well, if you'll look, A is your longer leg and B is your shorter leg. It really doesn't matter which one you solve for first. For example, if you try to solve for the longer leg, you would see that the longer leg is the square root of 3 times the shorter leg. And you would realize you don't have the shorter leg, so you really can't use that formula yet. So let's find the shorter leg first. Well, if you look at your formula here, the shorter leg equals the hypotenuse divided by 2. Now the hypotenuse is 9. So 9 over 2, or 9 divided by 2, is 4.5. So the shorter leg equals 9 divided by 2, which is 4.5. And your shorter leg is B, so I'm going to go ahead and put <coughs> 4.5 right here. So there, you just found your shorter leg, 4.5. Let me say that again. In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the shorter leg equals the hypotenuse divided by 2. The hypotenuse divided by 2. Now. Let's go ahead and solve for the longer leg. Here's your formula right here. Longer leg equals square root of 3 times the shorter leg. Well, we know the shorter leg is 4.5, so where the shorter leg is, SL right here, I'm going to go ahead and substitute 4.5. So square root of 3 times 4.5. Now, technically, you should write the 4.5 out front. So the longer leg is 4.5 square root of 3. And there you go. And notice longer leg is your A. So this answer right here would go right over here in this blank. There's A. Okay? So that's it. That's one of the types of problems that we, that we uh, solve on 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay? Let's look at another scenario. All right? Copy this in your notes. <clears throat> We're going to do this one together. 
Notice you're given the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we're going to solve for X and Y. X and Y. So here we go. First of all, you go to your 90 degree angle. You go straight across. Label that side your hypotenuse. Now go to 30 degrees. Go straight across. Label that your shorter leg. And the other side is your longer leg. So there we go. Now, um, let's try. I'm not sure which one we're going to solve for first. Let's see what we can do, okay? Let's try the longer leg first. How do you find the longer leg? Well, it says right here, you take the shorter leg times the square root of 3. Shorter leg times the square root of 3. Well, do we know the shorter leg? Yes, we do. It's 8. So all that I have to do to find the longer leg is I simply take square root of 3 times the shorter leg, which is 8. Now, technically speaking, I would like you to write the 8 out front. So the longer leg equals 8 square root of 3. And of course, the longer leg is x, so 8 square root of 3 is what equals x. Pretty simple, students. Okay, I mean, if you if you can label the three sides correctly and then use your formulas correctly, these are not difficult. They're really not. Okay. Now we haven't solved for y yet, and y is the hypotenuse. So let's go to your formulas and let's see how to find the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse equals two times the shorter leg. Hypotenuse equals two times the shorter leg. Well, the shorter leg is eight, so the hypotenuse is two times 8. 2 times 8. So the hypotenuse equals 16. And notice the hypotenuse is the same thing as y. So 16 equals y. There we go. I mean, students, cut and dried, not that difficult, okay? Um, just use your formulas and make sure you label your sides correctly. All right? Okay, I want you to go ahead now and try one of these on your own. Now remember, I'm going fast on purpose. I expect you to pause the video and look things over, okay? And then continue on. Okay, try this one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video now at this time and work the problem out. Then turn the video back on and see if you saw for A and B correctly. Okay, hopefully you're done solving for A and B. If you're not, um, be sure and pause the video <clears throat> and then watch how to do this, okay? All right, here we go. Notice we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so we can definitely use these formulas. The first thing that you do is you label all three sides. So we go to the right angle, go straight across from the right angle, and B would be your hypotenuse. Then go to 30 degrees, go straight across. Four would be your shorter leg. And then the last side left has to be your longer leg. Now, um, let's solve solve for the hypotenuse first, okay? The hypotenuse is 2 times the shorter leg. Now notice the hypotenuse is B. And so B equals, now how would you find the hypotenuse? 2 times the shorter leg. Well, how long is the shorter leg? The shorter leg is 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. So there's the hypotenuse, B equals 8. Again, we use this formula right here. Hypotenuse equals 2 times the shorter leg. The shorter leg is 4, so 2 times 4. Now let's find the longer leg. Well, if you'll look right here, the longer leg equals the square root of 3 times the shorter leg. Longer leg equals square root of 3 times the shorter leg. And the shorter leg is 4. So the longer leg, which is really A, a equals square root of 3 times the shorter leg, which is 4. And of course, we really do like to write this uh, in the correct manner. So we're going to take this 4 right here and put it in front of the square root of 3. And then this would be your answer right here. A equals 4 square root of 3. Okay? Um, and so that's it using your formulas. First of all, recognizing that you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And as soon as you realize you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, then you realize you can use these three formulas. So once you realize you can use these three formulas, you then label all three of your sides so you know which side you have and which two sides you're solving for, and then go ahead and solve for those two sides. Okay? All right, let's take a look at another scenario that, that sometimes happens with 30, 60, 90 triangles. Go ahead and copy this in your notes, and let's get started. Um, here's my 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I come over here at 90 degrees, go straight across. X would be my hypotenuse. Then I go to 30 degrees, go straight across. Y will be my shorter leg. 
and then the last side left over is my longer leg. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky on these types of problems here. Whenever you know the longer leg, but you don't know these other two sides, the formulas can be a little tricky. Let me show you why. We're trying to solve for hypotenuse. Well, hypotenuse is two times the shorter leg, and we don't know the shorter leg. So you might say to yourself, okay, no problem. I'll just solve for the shorter leg. Okay, let's come over here and look. The shorter leg is the hypotenuse divided by 2, and we don't know the hypotenuse. So you can't use any either one of these two formulas. So what you're going to have to do then is use this formula here. And it's not too hard to do. Longer leg equals square root of 3 times the shorter leg. Now, I do know the longer leg, and the longer leg is 4 square root of 3. Do you see that right here, students? The longer leg is 4 square root of 3. So where the longer leg is, I'm going to put 4 square root of 3 equals square root of 3 times the shorter leg, just like that. Now, I'm trying to get the shorter leg all by itself so that I know what the shorter leg equals. So square root of 3 and shorter leg are being multiplied by each other. So in order to get rid of the square root of 3, I must divide by square root of 3. However, if you divide one side by the square root of 3, you must divide the other side by the square root of 3. So these cancel. <clears throat> leaving you with shorter leg over here and over here your square root of threes cancel leaving you with four so there we did it we found the shorter leg and the shorter leg is y so y equals four now we can find the hypotenuse pretty quickly come back up here and look at your formula for hypotenuse hypotenuse equals two times the shorter leg 2 times the shorter leg. Well, the shorter leg is 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. So your hypotenuse, or x, has to equal 8 because the hypotenuse is always twice as big as the shorter leg. So that's it. All that you have to do is label your sides and know which formula to use. Okay? I want you to try this one on your own. So go ahead now at this time and pause the video, work the entire problem out, and then don't turn the video back on until you're finished. Or if you're really, really confused or stuck and you have to watch me, that's fine. But other than that, do this on your own and then check your answer. Okay, um, let's go ahead and see how you did on this problem. Hopefully you did well. First of all, we notice we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so we know we can use these formulas right here. So let's label our three sides. Here's your right angle. Go straight across, and A would be your hypotenuse. Then go to 30, go straight across. This will be B will be your shorter leg. And then the last side left over is your longer leg. Now, um, that we have the same problem here or the same dilemma here that we had up here we can't use our hypotenuse formula because we don't know what the shorter leg is and we can't use our shorter leg formula because we don't know what the hypotenuse is so this is the only formula we can use okay so let's go ahead and use that formula longer leg equals square root of 3 times the shorter leg. Now I do know what the longer leg is, it's 5 square root of 3 so for longer leg I'm gonna put 5 square root of 3 equals square root of 3 times SL, your shorter leg. Now these are multiplying, so in order to get rid of the square root of 3, we're going to have to divide by square root of 3. But if you divide one side by square root of 3, you must divide the other side by square root of 3. So you're left with 5 equals <coughs> your shorter leg. And of course your shorter leg is B, so B equals 5. Now your hypotenuse is A. So A equals, now look at this formula here. How do you always find the hypotenuse? 2 times the shorter leg. 2 times the shorter leg. And the shorter leg is um, 5. The shorter leg is 5. We just found that a second ago. And 5 times 2 is 10. So the hypotenuse would be 10. Okay? So there we go. So we just reviewed three different scenarios that can spring up when you're solving for missing sides of 30, 60, 90 triangles, okay? These formulas right here will be given to you on your quiz tomorrow, okay? All right, let me get a drink here and we'll continue on. <clears throat> Okay, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, <clears throat> 
whenever you're given a right triangle and you're asked to find the sine or cosine of a given angle and by the way I'm not sure why I have I let's make this G real quick okay let's make that G I apologize there we go now whenever you're given a right triangle and you're asked to find the sine or cosine of a given angle remember we use our formula sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse okay so what angle are we dealing with G so we circle G we go straight across this is my opposite side I then go to my 90 degrees and go straight across <coughs> And this is my hypotenuse and then the last side left over is always going to be your adjacent side so now that I've labeled those we're all set and by the way why did I circle angle G because we're dealing with angle G so sine of G is opposite over hypotenuse which would be square root of 39 over 8 and you're welcome to leave your answer like that so the sine of G equals this right here the sine of G is adjacent over hypotenuse which would be 5 over 8 so the sine of angle G is 5 over 8 not too bad okay alright let's have you now try one on your own I want you to find the sine of I make that an I and the cosine of I on your own so go ahead and pause the video find the sine and cosine of angle I right here and then turn the video back on and see how you did okay here we go whenever I ask you to find the sine or cosine of an angle and you're given a right triangle then you circle that angle you go straight across we call this our opposite side here's my hypotenuse go straight across here's my right angle go straight across A would be my hypotenuse and the leftover side is your adjacent side so now we're all set the sine of angle I is opposite over hypotenuse opposite is 5 <clears throat> and the opposite is or the hypotenuse is 8 so the sine of angle I is 5 eighths now let's find the cosine of angle I okay the cosine of angle I well um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and the adjacent side is square root of 39 and the hypotenuse is 8 so the cosine of I is square root of 39 over 8 and that's it okay make sure you can do these on the quiz tomorrow none of this math we're going over today is too difficult you're gonna have to go home finish the video if you don't finish it in class today and maybe watch the whole video again until you're a master at doing all these problems you can, we could have five 100s tomorrow on this quiz if you'll go home and dedicate yourself to studying this okay and if you don't then I really can't help you okay you're gonna have to do the studying alright okay let's try one on your own okay um, let's move on now to calculator problems if I ask you to find the sine of a given angle on the quiz tomorrow which I will and instead of saying sine of angle a I give you an actual number this is where your calculator comes in so let's find the sine of 43 go ahead and get your calculators out if you don't bring a calculator to class tomorrow guys that's your own fault okay you're to come to class prepared I can't do these for you uh, and you can't do them yourself if you don't have a calculator so if you'll type in sine of 43 you should get this right here 0.682 if you round to three decimal places now get your calculators out and type in the cosine of 43 the cosine of 43 is 0 0.731 0 0.731 if you round correctly now check these and if you're getting these right then go ahead and do these on your own I would like you to try these four right here on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, do all four of these, and then turn the video back on. Okay, hopefully um, you're ready for this. I'm going to go pretty quick. If you type in the sine of 15, um, you might have rounded to a different place, which is fine. For me, I'm going to round these to four decimal places, no, no certain reason. So 2.588. 0.2588. All right, let's take a look at the cosine of 15. The cosine of 15 would be 0 0.9652. 0 0.9652. Now the sine of 72. The sine of 72 would be 0 0.9511. 0 0.9511. 
five one one and the cosine of seventy two would be point three zero nine zero point thirty ninety okay so these are calculator problems these are pretty simple I don't think you guys will struggle with this a whole lot okay all right let's continue on now I might give you well there's no might tomorrow on the quiz I will give you a right triangle and I will say find the tangent of a given angle it might be G so can you find the tangent of G when I give you a right triangle Well, you should be able to I mean just simply circle G go straight across this is your opposite side here's your right angle go straight across this is your hypotenuse and then the last side left over has to be your adjacent side. Excuse me. <clears throat> so with that in mind, the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. And so the tangent of G would be 24, which is your opposite over your adjacent, which is 18. And of course, you do need to reduce that. So 24 over 18 would reduce to, uh, let's see. four thirds. Six would go into both of those numbers. Okay? So the tangent of angle G is four thirds. Not too difficult, okay? As long as you know your trig ratios. Alright, let's have you try one on your own, okay? I want you to try to find the tangent of J. So go ahead and pause the video, find the tangent of J, and then turn the video back on and see how you did. <clears throat> Okay, hopefully you did well on this problem. Let's see how you did. We're finding the tangent of J, so that's the angle you circle. Go straight across. This is your opposite side. Here's your 90 degrees. Go straight across. This is your hypotenuse. And the last side has to be your adjacent side. And now we're all set. The trig uh, ratio, or the tangent ratio, is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of J would be 18, which is your opposite over adjacent which is 24. If you reduce that you will get 3 fourths. So the tangent of angle J is 3 fourths. Hopefully you got that right. Okay. Now let's try some calculator problems. On the quiz tomorrow I might just give you one like this and say find the tangent of 74. So go ahead and grab your calculators. Let's do this one together. Type in tangent of 74. Make sure you're in degrees. And if you type this in correctly you will get 3.4874. 3.4874. So there we go. Pretty simple. Just calculator problems. I would like you to do these two on your own. So go ahead and pause the video. I want you to find the tangent of 35 on your own. Then find the tangent of 59 on your own. Then turn the video back on. Let's see how you did. Okay, hopefully you did well on these. Let's type in the tangent of 35. Let's see if you got it right. You might have rounded to a different place. So if you did, that's fine. But if you rounded to four decimal places, you will get 0.7002. Okay? Now, let's type in the tangent of 59. Let's see, which, let's see if your answer matches mine. If you typed it incorrectly, you should get 1.6643. So hopefully you're getting these answers out. If not, you need to get some help from someone in the class on how to use your calculator. Okay? All right, moving on. Let's solve for A and B. So on the quiz tomorrow, I'm going to give you some right triangles in which I say solve for A and B. And you might say, Mr. Earhart, we just did that. Well, no, we did and we didn't. Look back at these problems. These problems back here were all 30, 60, 90 triangles. So you could use these formulas right here. Look, we don't have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay? We don't have that. So we're going to have to solve this um, in a different way. So please listen carefully, take some good notes, and then I'm going to have you try this problem here on your own. Okay, here we go. First of all, you realize you do not have a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90 triangle, correct? So you can't use your shortcuts. Secondly, you should notice that we have only one known side. So because we only have one known side, we can't use Pythagorean's theorem. So the only thing left for us to do is to use sine, cosine, and tangent. So here's how you do this. Please take some really good notes. You circle this angle here that you know, and once you circle it, go straight across. This will be your opposite side. Then go to your right angle, go straight across. This will be your hypotenuse. And then the last side over here, 
has to be your adjacent side okay so the first thing you do is you label all three sides then don't forget the little um, the little trick that I showed you to remember your trig ratios so ka toa and if I were you I would, I would write that on your quiz as soon as you get it so katoa okay now it's up to you we can solve for a first or we can solve for B first it does not matter which one you solve for first okay you can solve for A first or B. I'm going to choose to solve for A first, but again, it doesn't matter. So if I'm going to solve for A, students, would you please listen to me? This is one of these scenarios where I can't give you step one, step two, step three. You have to reason. So I'm solving for A. Okay, and that's my what side? Opposite side, correct? I only know one other side. That's my hypotenuse. Do you see that? Now, come on, students, think about this. Why would I want to use opposite and adjacent at the same time? Why would I want to do that? That's two unknowns. That's two sides that I don't know. I can't take an equation and have two unknowns, A and B, and try to solve it. That's not possible. So if you choose to solve for A first, which is your opposite side, that's fine. But the other side you want to circle would be your hypotenuse. If you choose to solve for B first, that's fine. But the other side you want to use is your known side, your hypotenuse, okay? So I chose to solve for A first, so I'm going to use my opposite side. Well, I want to use a known side to go along with that unknown side, and that's my hypotenuse. So the two sides I'm going to use are opposite and hypotenuse opposite and hypotenuse well which one of these trig ratios over here uses opposite and hypotenuse this one's opposite and adjacent this one's adjacent and hypotenuse but this one is opposite and hypotenuse so I would write down now watch I know I want to use this one because it has the two sides that I circled hypotenuse and opposite. So, sine of, now what angle are we dealing with? 34. Sine of 34 equals opposite, which is A, over hypotenuse 7. There, you set it up. You set up a very nice equation that we can now solve. Remember what I taught you to do on Friday, I believe it was? Whatever your denominator is, in this case it's 7, you multiply the entire equation by 7 because that's your denominator, 7 over 1. Now 7 times sine is just 7 sine 34. However, 7 over 1 times A over 7, your 7 would cancel with your 7, leaving you with 1 times A over 1 times 1. And 1 times A is A, and 1 times 1 is 1. So we're left with A. Now, is A all by itself? Yes. So simply take your calculator and type in 7 times the sine of 34. If you do that correctly, you should get 3 point 3.914350324. Now I'm going to round that to 3.9, which you can round wherever you want to. That's up to you. So 3.9 equals A. So you just found A. Now the only side left that we have to find here is side B. Okay? So I know I'm dealing with my adjacent side, and the other side is going to be my hypotenuse. So which trig formula up here uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, this one right here. Here's my adjacent. Here's my hypotenuse. So I know I'm going to say the cosine of 34 equals adjacent B over hypotenuse 7. There it is. So now my denominator is 7, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 7 over 1, and here we go. 7 times cosine is 7, cosine 34. 7 over 1 times b over 7, your 7s would cancel, and you're left with 1 times b over 1. 1 times b is b. So b is all by itself. Now with your calculator, simply type in 7 cosine of 34 degrees, 
and you will get 5.8032630008. So I'm going to go ahead and put 5.8. So there, you just solved for side B, 5.8, and that's it. Students, it's not that hard uh, once you realize that you don't have one of your special triangles and you can't use Pythagorean's theorem, then you know you have to use sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay? I want you to try one on your own. Please try hard to do it on your own. If you can't, that's fine, but try to so that you can see where you're weak and where you're strong. Okay? So try this one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video at this time, and then when you're done, go ahead and restart the video and see how you did. Okay, hopefully you're finished. Let's go ahead and see how you did. Now the first thing on the quiz tomorrow you should notice is you don't have a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So you can't use your special formulas. Number two, you do not know two sides so you cannot use Pythagorean's theorem. The only thing left for you to use would be your sine, cosine, and your tangent. And so hopefully you have your little um, trick here written down so Katoa. Now I don't care if you solve for the X first I don't care if you solve for the Y first it doesn't matter <clears throat> but the first thing I'm going to do is label my side so here's my right angle go straight across this is your opposite side <clears throat> and I'm wrong I apologize sorry about that the first thing you do is just circle the angle you're dealing with go straight across this is your opposite side here's your right angle go straight across this is your hypotenuse side and then the last side left over is your adjacent. Now I said I'm going to solve for x first. So if I'm solving for x first, then I'm dealing with my adjacent side. And what other side do I know? My hypotenuse. So I'm dealing with adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, the only trig function up here that has a and h is this one right here, cosine. So I know I'm going to write cosine of 65 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now because my denominator is 12 I'm going to multiply the entire equation by 12 over 1. 12 times cosine is simply 12 cosine 65 and then 12 over 1 times x over 12 your 12's cancel and you have 1 times x and 1 times 1. 1 over x is x over 1 and notice x is all by itself. Well, if x is all by itself, all you have to, all that you have to do then is type in 12 cosine of 65. If you do that correctly and round to one decimal place, you should get 5.1. So there, just like that, we solve for x. Not too bad. Now, <clears throat> Let's come over here and let's solve for y. Well, if I'm solving for y, that's my opposite side. My other known side is my hypotenuse. So I'm dealing with opposite and hypotenuse. Well, the only trig function I see up here, a trig ratio that has opposite and hypotenuse, would be this one right here. So I know I'm dealing with sine. So the sine of, excuse me, <clears throat> the sine of 65 equals opposite over hypotenuse. There we go. So now you have your equation all set up. Your denominator is 12, so we're going to multiply the entire equation by 12 over 1. 12 times sine would be 12 sine 65. And then 12 over 1 times y over 12, your 12s would cancel. 1 times y is y, 1 times 1 is 1, y over 1 is y. Now, the y is all by itself. If the y is all by itself, then you're ready to simply type into your calculator 12 sine 65. And when you type in 12 times sine of 65, you will get 10.875693444. So if you round to one decimal place, you will get 10.9 for y. Okay? It's been a pretty long video. Just one more scenario we're going to look at. Two problems and we're finally finished. Okay? And don't forget, you got to finish this at home if you don't finish it in class. Okay. Um, take some really good notes. This is a little different than the other two problems, so please watch carefully. I am asking you to solve this triangle. Now we notice right away that it's not a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90 triangle. We also notice right away that we do not know two sides, so we cannot use Pythagorean's theorem. So the only thing left for us to use will be either sine, cosine, or tangent.
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label my side. So here's my right angle straight across. A is my hypotenuse. Um, and you know one thing I did forget, and I apologize, is to put an angle right here. So let's go ahead and put an angle in right here. We'll call it 45 degrees. There we go. Okay, here's my right angle. Go straight across. This is my hypotenuse. And this is the angle we're dealing with. <coughs> Excuse me. So we circle it. And we go straight across over here. This will be your opposite side. And your last side would be your adjacent side. There we go. Okay. Now, we know the adjacent side. We have to solve for A or B. Now, students, it doesn't matter which one you solve for first. It doesn't matter. I'm going to solve for A first. So I'm solving for the hypotenuse. And I know the adjacent side. Okay. Solving for the hypotenuse. I know the adjacent side. Got it? Okay, so A and H. Which one of these trig functions has A and H? Well, this one does right here. So that's the one I'm going to use, A and H. So I would say the cosine of 45 degrees equals adjacent, which is 8, over my hypotenuse, which would be A. There, you've set your equation up. Now, notice your denominator is an A. So we're, that's no big deal. Just because it's a letter, it's no big deal. We're going to put A over 1 and multiply the entire equation by A. Now, A times cosine would simply be A cosine 45 degrees. A over 1 times 8 over A, your A's would cancel, leaving you with 1 times 8 and 1 times 1. 1 times 8 is 8 over 1 is 8. Now, unlike the other problems we did in the last page, um, A is not all by itself. A is being multiplied times the cosine. So if you want to get A by itself, you must divide by the cosine of 45. However, if you divide one side by the cosine of 45, you must divide the other side by the cosine of 45. So these cancel, leaving you with A. A equals, now with your calculator, you would simply type in 8 divided by the cosine of 45. And if you're doing that correctly, you will get 11.3137085. I'm going to round to one decimal place and I will get 11.3. Okay? 11.3. Now we solve for A. Now let's come up here and let's solve for B. Now B is my opposite side and the other side that I know is my adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent. Which one of these trig ratios up here has opposite and adjacent? Tangent does right here. O and A. This one doesn't and this one doesn't. So I'm going to use tangent. Tangent of 45 degrees equals opposite over adjacent. B over 8. So there, you set the trig equation up very nicely. Your denominator is 8, so we're going to multiply both sides or the entire equation by 8 over 1. Now, 8 times tangent is 8 tangent 45 degrees. 8 over 1 times b over 8, your 8's would cancel, and you have 1 times b and 1 times 1. 1 times b is b, b over 1 is b. And look, b is all by itself. Over here, A was not by itself, so I had to divide both sides by the cosine of 45. Here, B is all by itself, so I simply take my calculator and I type 8 tangent of 45. 8 tangent of 45, which gives you 8 exactly, so no rounding is necessary. So 8 equals B, okay? These are not easy, but you can do these if you'll practice, practice, and use the steps that I'm giving you. You'll be fine, okay? All right, let's go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, let's go ahead and try one now um, on your own. I would like you to try this bottom problem here on your own. Let me go ahead and get rid of this so we have some room. So at this time, go ahead and pause the video. <clears throat> and... Try this on your own. When you're finished, turn the video back on and see how you did, okay? 
Okay, here we go, students. Um, first of all, you notice that you do not have a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90 triangle, so no shortcuts are going to work. We do not know two sides. We only know one side, so we cannot use Pythagorean's theorem. So we're going to have to use either sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay, so Katoa. So I come down here and I circle my angle. I go straight across. You should have called this the opposite when you did the problem. You should have gone to your 90 degrees and gone straight across and called this your hypotenuse. You should have labeled the Y side your adjacent side. If not, back this up and watch it again. Find your mistake. Now it does not matter if you solve for X first or Y. I'm going to solve for X first for no certain reason. So I'm solving for X, the hypotenuse, and my known side, the side that I know is 5, the opposite side. So I'm dealing with the hypotenuse side and the opposite side. Well, which one of these trig ratios over here deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Well, the only one, it's not this one, it's not this one, it's sine. Okay, so I know I'm going to use sine, and I know the angle that I'm dealing with is 50. So the sine of 50 equals opposite, which is 5, over the hypotenuse, which is x. So there, I've set it up. Now, um, your denominator is an x, so I've taught you the first thing you do is you multiply the entire equation by the denominator over 1, x over 1. Well, x times sine would be x sine 50 and then x over 1 times 5 over x your x's would cancel and you're left with 1 times 5 and 1 times 1 1 times 5 is 5 over 1 is 5 now if x was all by itself then you would simply type the remainder of the equation into your calculator but x is not by itself x is multiplying times the sine so in order to get rid of the sine we've got to divide both sides by the sine of 50 divide by the sine of 50. So these cancel and you're left with x equals 5 divided by sine 50. So with your calculators you want to type in 5 divided by sine 50. And if you type that in correctly you will get out 6.5270-36447. I'm going to round to one decimal place. I'm going to get 6.5. 6 so there we found x. Now we have to solve for y and we're finished. So here's your y, the adjacent side. The other known side is your opposite side. So I'm dealing with adjacent and opposite. Adjacent and opposite. Which one of these trig fr functions up here has opposite and adjacent? Not this one, not this one. Tangent does. So I know I'm going to use tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of 50 equals opposite over adjacent. There, I set it up. It's that simple. Now your denominator is y, so I'm going to multiply both of the both sides of the entire equation by y over 1. Why the letter y? Because my denominator is y. y times tangent would be y tangent 50. And y over 1 times 5 over y, your y would cancel with your y and 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 1 is 1, so 5 over 1 is 5. Now, if the y was by itself, then we would simply type the rest of the equation into our calculator. But y is not by itself, y is multiplying by your tangent. So in order to get rid of this tangent, you must divide both sides by the tangent of 50. The tangent of 50. So I'm going to cross this off. You're left with y equals, and now with my calculator, I'm going to type in 5 divided by the tangent of 50. 5 divided by the tangent of 50. And if you type that incorrectly, you will get 4.1954981516. Rounding that to one decimal place, you will get 4.2. 4 Okay, so there we go. We've, we've, we've reviewed a lot today. It's been great for you guys. There will be nothing on the quiz tomorrow that's not on this review 
um, class period and you know what I can't go home with you and make you do certain things but if I were you I would watch this video if you have to watch it two or three times I would watch it until you're able to work out every type of problem on here without any mistakes okay without your notes without any mistakes and so tomorrow we will have a quiz and we'll start the last lesson in the chapter and then we'll finish the rest of that lesson on Wednesday have a little bit of homework on Tuesday and Wednesday a review sheet on Thursday and a test on Friday okay never hesitate to call or email if you guys have any questions at all okay have a good day